let's talk about Sunday. Uh, Sunday, we wrapped up the New Normal series, um, and we had kind of landed the plane, as we often say, at the end of a series. And uh, I want to talk about a couple of points you made, um, get into them a little bit uh, deeper. Um, I love my favorite quote from the message was, we don't trust God because we know what he will do. We trust God because of what he has done and what he can do. Mm. And then, of course, that story that you told Chadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was an illustration of that. My question is, why is that so difficult for us? Why do we push back on that idea? We want to trust what we think God will do <laughs> rather than mm-hmm. what he has done. Um, wh- where does that come from? What's that thing? I, You know, if I want to track it through the course of this series, and I think not everybody gets where we're going, but I think we we exposed it in the series with week two you talked about we all have this illusion of control. Mm -hmm. I think all of that is about, I want to have an illusion of control and that God's a part of that. And I do trust in God, but a part of my trusting is God is I'm hoping I can trust in such a way that God and I together can have some control over the circumstances of my life and Mm -hmm. other people that I don't particularly like what's happening circumstantially. Mm -hmm. I I think that's what it is. I want to, my trust in God, I do trust him, but I, I trust him more when I can, I can manipulate my circumstances too. Yeah. Cause I have a little of the control. I I, I feel like I controlled something by my prayer or by my prayer and fasting or by my coming to church or by my hopping on one foot while I talk to him or whatever the combination of things is that seemed to work for me. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I think where it comes from is what you're talking about here is the sense of, sense of control, which ultimately comes out of the fact that we're made in the image of God. And that as people made in the image of God, what that really means is that we were made to influence and to exert some level of dominance over things in this world, right? That God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, that old world and the word in the Bible was dominion. We want right. to have dom- mm-hmm. dominance, dominion. Yeah, that we are to rule over things, and God made us to rule, but it was this idea of co ruling that in in the garden, right? That God sets us up and he's walking with us and he's ruling along with us, and it's supposed to be our will under his will that it's that it it isn't that i don't get to decide it's it really is god and i working in a partnership together and you do see that throughout the bible it isn't this idea that god's just uh totally immovable on things Mm -hmm. god is constantly having conversations with people and they'll go well what about this and god goes okay that works like there's this (laughs) level of if it does not contradict who god is and what his will is that he's willing to partner with us but the problem is it's that so when you talk about where it comes from it is that that central garden of eden thing that in our heads we go what if god doesn't want my good mm. what if god isn't out for if my good if he can't be trusted if he can't be trusted what if you know so the if if you're not if you're not much of a bible person and and you haven't heard right god sets up the garden of eden he puts adam and eve in and he says you can i want you to rule over the earth and the animals and everything i want you to co-rule with me and he goes you can eat from anything in in the garden except for one tree and he says when you eat from that tree, you'll surely die. But then uh, the there's a serpent, right, who comes into the, the garden, right, and he's the deceiver. And what he says to them is, hey, did God really say mm-hmm. that's yeah. the ultimate question? And question really, what, yeah, he's questioning God, and he's putting this thought into our minds, can I really trust him? Because you could just take this over in your own hands. You could eat from this tree. You could do what you think. And that that whole idea of the tree being the knowledge of good and evil is me getting to determine for myself what is good, what is evil. God doesn't get to determine it. Mm -hmm. And so when I end up in this place of wanting control, I am taking what God made me in the image of, his image of having some level of control, but in submission, in trusting him to his will, and me saying, no, I don't like your version of what's good and evil. I want to get to determine what this is. And so I'm now trying to, and this is the ugly part of it, I'm trying to exert dominance over God. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm trying mm-hmm. to get dominance over him and saying, and so we as believers do this a lot where we go, if I pray the right thing or I faith the right thing, right? I just believe the right mm-hmm. thing, or maybe I got to do the right thing. Mm-hmm. And we don't say this, but it's what we mean. I can exert dominance over God. I can mm-hmm. kind of pin him down, yep. make him do what I want him to do. Mm-hmm. 
and then I now get to be God. Ultimately, is where because that's what the, the tempter says in the in the garden is yeah. the reason God doesn't want you to do this is you'll be just like God. Yep. Yeah, and then there's that thing of and back to the story that you use Ed on Sunday. You know, you got these three guys and they have a choice to make, and you know if they make this choice of defying the king, they're they're going to be burned alive. That's pretty much what they're facing. And here's the God that they serve who they they freely say that he, he can save us. But that God who's powerful enough to save them also had the power to then let them know before they made the choice, hey, you can do that and I'll save you. And but he, he did. didn't. He, did. he doesn't. He didn't. He didn't. And, he didn't. And that's what we get frustrated with. It's like, God, I want to follow you. I want to do exactly what you say. So if you could come over here and tell me where that's going to wind up, then I'll be happy to do what you say. And almost never does it happen that way. No. In fact, I don't know if it's ever happened that way for me. Yeah. It's always a thing of, hey, here's what I want you to do. And then if I say, well, where are we going? No, here's what I want you to do. Yeah. Follow me, and we'll we'll get to where we're going. And I'll be with you the whole time. And I'm like, yeah, but can you just show me the destination first? Yeah. Show me how that's going to wind sure. up. And he never chooses to do that, yet – He's powerful enough to bring me through anyway. There's got to be a reason he doesn't do that. There's a reason he didn't do that for them. There's a reason he doesn't do that for me, and it comes back to he wants us, He wants a relationship of trust. Well, he wants us to seek him ultimately yes. too, right? Yes. It's that the, the, the number one command, or I should say number one command, but a consistent command in the Bible is seek. Mm-hmm. Seek me and you will find me, right? Seek first the kingdom of God. That There's this process of God saying, I want you to, to find me. I want you to, and I'm leaving every evidence you need to find me. And I'm leaving you all the, all the, uh, commands that you need to know what to do in these situations. You just have to seek after it and you have to want it. I do think one of our biggest struggles, um, is, and this may get too much. And I know we're going to talk about a little later of this next series we're getting into though, is that we don't, at my heart of hearts, I don't always want what God wants for me. Right. Mm-hmm. And and I want God to want what I want. And mm. I think the invitation, what Jesus was inviting us to was not a life free of the problems that I face. And he's not inviting me to a life that's free of the trouble. In fact, consistently, Jesus said, this world's going to have trouble. <laughs> this yep. world's going to have problems. But what he's inviting me to is this process, and this goes back to what you talked about last week, that he's going to work good in me Mm -hmm. to make me the kind of person who can do easily what God calls me to do. And then as one person I just love says that God is creating in me the kind of person that he can trust to do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Right now, the issue is not always that I can't trust God. God cannot trust me that if I pray for something, God goes, well, I'm sure Nathan, I'm sure whatever Nathan wants is good enough. Hey, man, just do whatever you want to do. It'll be okay. Nathan (laughs) Nathan will get it done. He knows that often when I'm praying, and not that it's wrong for me to pray, whatever I'm feeling, I should be praying and talking about. But God often has to go, hey, I'm glad you talked to me about that. We're not going to do that. That's a terrible (laughs) thing It's a really bad idea. But in the process of all of the trouble and all of the just parts of life and the difficult people I have to deal with, if I submit to what God wants me to do, it forms parts in my character where now my heart looks more like his. And then when I pray things for people, I naturally want to bless my enemies. Whereas often now when I'm praying, I'm like, hey, God, could you make them realize how wrong Mm -hmm. they are? Yeah. Could they bless me? If my enemies could start blessing me, I would love them the way you want to. All I need you to do is have them bless me. Well, then they wouldn't be enemies. There you go. Yes, exactly. That's cart for the horse, man. (laughs) Yes. But God wants me to become the kind of person who naturally, I often do what God wants through gritted teeth. And I'm just, oh. I don't remember where it was that I read this. Somebody wrote that the, the sign of my growing closer to God is the, the, amount of time it takes for me to say yes to him. The, uh, when, yeah. when I'm short, I don't know if it's Ortberg who said I that. I think that's a Willard thing. Oh, Willard it thing. Like a Willard that's thing. A, okay. It's the cycle time. Yeah. It's the cycle time between <laughs> here's what I want, here's what God wants. The cycle time between me getting to where God wants, that's my maturity. Yeah. The how shorter long it gets. Takes, the shorter it gets between my want and yeah. God wants, that's how you measure maturity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so anyway, yeah, I think that's, 
I think that's ultimately the issue for me, and I think for many of us, is Jesus inviting me into a process of being trained mm-hmm. to to be able to uh, have influence like I was intended to have and to do things that when God goes, you know, the image I have in my head is I hope that when God sees something in our world and he goes, I need someone to do something about that, I hope eventually God's first thought is Nathan. Mm-hmm. I bet Nathan can do that. And I think sometimes <laughs> I think sometimes it's like, I'm going to ask Nathan to do it, but we know what's going to happen. <laughs> I'm going to ask Nathan to do it. He's going to kind of shuffle his feet, maybe two or three years. Maybe Nathan won't even hear me because he's not even listening to what I'm saying. Yeah, he's I'm, got something else going on. I was going, Nathan, Nathan, and then go, okay, I'm going to have to ask somebody else. <laughs> I'm going to get somebody else to do this. But this idea of God going, I want... God's God always is working within us to fix the problems in the world and in me not me becoming the kind of person that God turns to and goes, "Hey, let's mm-hmm. do this one together." And yep. uh, all that. So I you know, the interesting thing to me is I think that statement of uh ultimately we trust God because of what he's done, not because of what and what he can do mm-hmm. and not not what not what I know is going to happen. I can't remember exactly how I said, but that's sure. the gist yeah. of it. Yeah. We trust God because of what he has done and what he can do. Uh, not that we know what he will do. Yes. That's the basis of Christianity over every other religion. And you guys have been around. I mean, you've only mainly heard me speak until you started mm-hmm. listening to real good preachers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but every Easter, that's basically what I've taught at mm-hmm. community Christian forever. Yeah. That, the center of Christianity is an event. Mm-hmm. It's not a way to get to God. It's mm-hmm. not a system of me doing my life. It is this event that once I put my trust in, God can be trusted because that. Yeah. And so then whatever he asks, you know, I used to say every Easter, you know, when a dude rises from the dead, pretty much whatever he <laughs> asks, I need to say, okay. And even if, and even if he didn't do anything else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nothing else. I mean, you rise from the dead and you ask me to do something. Okay. Yes, you know, Cause there's one thing I know I can't do nothing about when it's time to die. Mm-hmm. I'm going. Yeah. Yes, sir. 